In section 6.2, we are learning the law of cosines. So this can be used to solve a triangle when we know the length of two sides and the included angle, so SAS, where the angle is between the sides, so we can find the third length. Or if we know all three sides, we can find the measure of any angle. So we have two different ways of writing the law of cosine. So we have our standard form, and so we want to use that for side, angle, side. And we have our alternate form that we're going to use when we know all three sides. These can all be used interchangeably. The alternative form just comes from rearranging the standard form, and it just depends on which two sides and angle you know, or which angle you are solving for. So let's use these to solve some examples. We want to start out by identifying what we know. We are told the measure of angle A, the length of side B, which remembers the side opposite angle B, and we are told the length of side C, which is the side opposite angle C. So I can now label these. And angle A is 115 degrees. So I have SAS, I have side angle side. So I'm going to use the standard form and I'm going to pick the one where I have angle A and then I am told B and C. So I'm going to write that A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times the cosine of A and now we simply plug in our known values. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of angle a. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And when you plug these all in, you get that a squared is equal to 451.8. Don't forget you need to take the square root of this in order to actually get a. So a is going to equal the square root of 451.8, which is 21.3. So that is our third side that we needed. You want to label it on here to remember which ones you have. That would be good. But we're not quite done. We have to find the remaining angles as well. So I now have all three sides, but I am missing two of the angles. I want to use the law of sines here to find my remaining two. I'm going to set up the ratio of angle A with the side over the sine of the angle. And I'm going to set that equal to b over sine of whatever b is. So when I solve this for b, I am going to get the inverse sine of b, little b, side b, times the sine of a, divided by the length of a. When I do that and I plug all the numbers in, I get the inverse sine of 0.64 or 39.7 degrees. We're going to use the exact same setup for C, except now we're going to plug in C to get angle C. And so C is going to be 25.3 degrees. We can also use the law of cosines to solve a triangle in the case where we know all three sides, as long as there is actually a triangle that exists with those three sides. In order for that to happen, the sum of the two smaller sides must be greater than the larger side. Okay, so 
Let's start by looking at both examples two and three to see if we can do that. So we're going to find our two smaller sides. So in example two, eight and 19 are our two smaller sides. Eight plus 14, and we're going to compare that to 19. So 8 plus 14 is 22, which is greater than 19, so there is a triangle. So we'll have to solve this one. Let's look at example 3. We're going to do the same setup. We're looking for our two shortest sides, which are 8 and 3. When I add those, 8 plus 3 is 11. 11 is less than 14, which is my third side. There is no triangle, so there's no need to solve it, but we do need to indicate that there is no solution by writing this. So let's go back to example two, and we're actually going to solve triangle ABC. Now, when you are solving a triangle in this case where we know all three sides, we want to first find the angle opposite the longest side. So we're going to start by finding angle B. So we're going to use our law of cosines in the alternative form. And so cosine of angle B is equal to a squared plus c squared minus b squared all over 2ac. I now can plug numbers in. So I have cosine of B is going to equal 8 squared plus 14 squared minus 19 squared all over 2 times 8 times 14. So the cosine of B equals negative 0.45, which I get B by taking the inverse cosine of 0.45, but with a negative. And so when I put that into my calculator, we are going to get that B is equal to 116.8 degrees. So we now have one angle. We still need our other two. We're now going to, you can either use the law of cosines or you can use the law of sines. Pick your poison. In the completed notes that are posted on the portal, they use the law of sines. So if you want to see it that way, go look there. I am going to work this at least the setup for angle A and angle B using the law of cosines, you get the same answers. So cosine of angle A is going to equal B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. So when you do that and then take the inverse cosine, you get that A is equal to 22.1 degrees. And then to solve for side C, or sorry, for angle C, the cosine of C is going to equal A squared plus B squared minus C squared all over 2AB, which when we plug all those numbers in on the right hand side and take the inverse cosine, then we get that C is equal to 41.1 degrees. In our final example, we're going to have to draw a picture to figure out how to do this. So the pitcher's mound on a women's softball field is 43 feet from home plate. All right, so let's start by drawing the bases. So if I'm looking at a baseball diamond or a softball diamond, if I call this here home plate, and the, the pitcher's mound is going to be somewhere here, okay? And then we know that the distance between the bases is 60 feet. And we know that this distance here is 43 feet. Okay, we know that these are all right angles because that's how it's set up. But we don't know if this side is actually, we don't know that this is an isosceles triangle. What we do know is that from this line to this line, that is half of a right angle, so that is 45 degrees. So I have two sides and the angle in between them, 
So we're going to be using the side angle side. And we want to know how far is the pitcher's mound from first base. So let's call this angle A. Let's call this angle B and this angle C. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. And the side we are solving for is side A. So I'm going to pick the law of cosines, standard form, because it's side angle sine, where it's set up to solve for A. So A squared is going to equal B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times the cosine of angle A. I'm going to plug numbers in, so that is equal to 60 squared plus 43 squared minus 2 times 60 times 43 times the cosine of 45 degrees. I can plug that all into my calculator. A squared is equal to just over 1800. Don't forget to take the square root of both sides. So A is equal to 42.4. The unit we're working in is feet. And so that is our answer. Our final formula in 6, 1 and 6, 2 is Heron's formula. This is kind of interesting because the proof of this is the oldest on record. Although some folks seem to have claimed that it was around before that. But the proof is the oldest on record. It's just another equation for the area of a triangle. In this case, instead of area being A, the area is going to be K. And it's just a formula, okay? So when we have S here, this is actually also its own formula that gets plugged in several times. You don't have to memorize this. You don't have to memorize the law of sines, law of cosines. We're going to give you these formulas on your quizzes and your test, okay? But we do want to know when it's easier to use this or one of our other equations for the area of a triangle. So we're going to, for each of our three examples, we are going to use the most appropriate formula to find the area of each of the triangles. For number one, we have three sides they're all different lengths. I don't know if it's a right triangle. And I, so, and I don't know any angle, so I can't use one of our equations from 6.1. In this case, I have three sides, so I have to use Heron's formula. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with that. We first want to find S. So S equals 1 half A plus B plus C, so 2 plus 3 plus 4. So that equals 1 half times 9, or 4.5. And then we get that the area, whoo, this is long, all right, but it is the square root of S, which is 4.5, times S minus A, times S minus B, times S minus C, and I think I mixed up the order of those. It doesn't matter. All right. And then I put that all into a calculator. Don't forget the square root. And we get that the area is 2.9 square feet. Know how to use it. You don't have to memorize the equation. All right. Let's look at number two. In this case, I have a side, the angle in between, and then another side. So in this case, I can use my equation from chapter 6.1. We could use Heron's formula, but it tells us to use the most appropriate. We don't want to use Heron's formula unless we have to, because it's really long. So if I know two sides and the angle in between, all right, I can say that this is equal to 1 half times those two sides. So we'll just call them b and c, and then the sine of the angle in between. So in this case, 1 half 2 times 4 
times the sine of 50 degrees. I can just put that in a calculator and I get that it is 3.1. Our units are feet, so it is square feet for my area on two. For three, we are actually given what this total base is and what the height is. We have an equation for the area of a triangle we haven't talked about in this unit, but it's the one that we all learned a long time ago that the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. In this case, that is one half times five times two, which simply comes out to be five square feet.